hello everyone in this video i'll i'll be explaining how to find the transfer function for a signal flow graph using mason's gain formula so we will consider an example for a signal flow graph and uh, we know the formula for mason's gain formula for finding the transfer function is given as uh, transfer function is equal to 1 by delta sigma that is summation k pk delta k and this k represents the number of forward paths and pk means it is the uh, gain of the kth forward path and delta k okay before defining delta k i should say what is delta delta is we have a formula that it is 1 minus it is summation of individual loop gains plus sum of product of loop gains of two non-touching loops minus sum of product of loop gains of three non-touching loops okay plus etc so this uh, next will be four non-touching loops like that it it goes on the formula goes on and delta k is nothing but it is the part of delta which is not touching the kth forward path okay so now let us see this example so what is a forward path forward path is nothing but it is the a path which is traversing from the input node to output node in the same direction so here we can see the input node is x1 output node is x8 so from here to this input node to output node we should have a path which is traversing in the same direction so here you can see if you see this one this path that is 1 g1 g2 g3 g4 g5 1 so this one is one forward path which is starting from x1 and ending at x8 the second forward path you can uh, identify here that is from 1 g1 then this g6 and then this one which is ending at x8 so uh, here we can see that there are two forward paths so for this particular example k is equal to 2 now the next step is like we need to find uh, the um, path gain forward path gain so here in path gain is nothing but it is the product of gain of individual branches so in this uh, first forward path we can see that this g1 is a uh, path gain between x2 x3 g2 is x between x2 and x4 so and so on so you take the product of all these gains you will be getting the forward path gain so it is g1 g2 g3 g4 g5 that is the uh, path gain of the first forward path and this path gain of the second forward path is this 1 into g1 into g6 into 1 that is nothing but g1 g6 so once we identify the forward path next step is we need to identify the number of loops see here we have identified the number of forward paths so k is equal to 2 and the forward path gain also we found now loops how will you find loop is nothing but it is um, uh, something which is starting and ending at the same node okay so if you consider here this one if you go travel from this node x3 then it is going to x4 then you can see it is coming we can reach back to x3 in this direction okay so loop is like you can just travel and it is like it is starting and end point is the end node is the same so starting from x3 and ending at x3 so like that how many we can find so this one is a loop that is g2 g3 uh, this minus h3 this is one loop similarly here we can have another loop that is g4 minus h2 then we have another loop here g5 h1 then we have another loop here we, we should see whether it is in the same direction we are traveling and it should reach back to the same node so g6 when you travel like this then minus h1 then minus h2 then minus h3 so it, it has come back to the same node so this is another loop so while um so we, even we can have a self loop also so for the in this particular self loop means it is going and uh, coming in the same uh, loop they won't it won't be uh, traversing to uh, through any other branches so in this particular problem we don't have a self loop but uh, we identified uh, four loops here and i'll show that one here number of loops four so l1 i'm just naming it as l1 l2 l3 and l4 so this uh, loop this is the first loop so how will you find the loop gain it is a product of um, individual branch gain so the g2 g3 and minus h3 so minus g2 g3 h3 is the loop gain of the first loop similarly we'll be getting the loop gains of the other loops 
so l2 will be minus g4 h2 so similarly this is the that fourth loop you can see here it is the loop gain is g5 minus h1 into minus h2 into minus h3 so we'll be getting it as minus g6 h1 h2 h3 so once you found that this loop then the next one is like for applying in the delta formula we need to find the uh, non-touching loops okay so non-touching loops uh, we need to find how many uh, two non-touching loops are there and we need to find if there are any three non-touching loops whether there are any four non-touching loops like that okay so delta in the formula we can write delta is nothing but it is equal to one minus sum of individual loop gains that we have already found here found there so individual loop gains is nothing but l1 plus l2 plus l3 plus l4 plus second uh, the second term should be the product of two non-touching loops so here in this particular case i'll show here in this diagram so in this one when you consider this one here i'll just mark that loops here so that it will be easy for you to identify so i'll i'm just marking this one l2 this is l2 this is l1 l2 l3 and the bigger one is l4 okay so now you can see that this l1 l1 and l3 are non-touching non-touching means there shouldn't be any common knot between those two nodes so l1 is completely independent of this l3 but whereas this l1 and l2 shares a common knot so this two uh, loops are touching so we can find only two loops which are not touching each other that is l1 and l3 so in this formula we have to put that individual loop gain plus product of loop gains of two non-touching loops so to product of uh, non loop gain of two non-touching loop is l1 into l3 so l1 loop gain we have found here that is minus g2 g3 h3 and l3 is minus g5 h1 so the product of two non-touching loops will be getting it as l1 l3 so when you have to multiply this two uh, loop gains that is g2 g3 h h3 into g5 h1 so that's that minus gets cancelled here you will be getting um the delta as l1 here the last term will be l1 l3 so we can just substitute the values here you will be getting delta value as 1 plus g2 g3 h3 plus g4 h2 plus g5 h1 plus g6 h1 h2 h3 plus g2 g3 g5 h1 h3 we have just substituted the values for this loop gains nothing else so now is the next step is like we know in the formula we have sigma k pk delta k upon delta so a denominator we have already found and even a pk that is k is equal to 2 we have found p1 and p2 now only delta k is remaining so since k is equal to 2 we we need to find delta 1 and delta 2 so to find delta 1 and delta 2 what is this delta 1 it is that part of delta which is not touching the first forward path okay so here when you see delta this one that is that part of delta which is not touching the first forward path so we will just see this uh, diagram and check whether any portion is not touching so here first forward path is coming from this x1 x2 x3 x4 this one it is going up to a, a, a 6 x 7 x8 so we can see that uh, this loop are all touching this first forward path so there is nothing like that so we need to have it will be 1 minus that portion here the delta portion that is not touching it will be this delta so every portion of this delta is touching the first forward path okay so it will be 1 minus 0 so we'll be writing delta 1 as 1 minus 0 you'll be getting it as 1 what about delta 2 delta 2 is that part of delta which is not touching the second forward path okay so we will see the second forward path which is the second forward path in our example i'll just mark it here the second forward path is this one see this is our second forward path right so when you just see this one which part is not touching we can see that this this node is touching the this uh, forward path even this node is also touching this forward path but what about this one this l2 is not touching the second forward path that means in the delta equation wherever that l2 is there that is not touching the second forward path so we need to 
consider so here in this delta this l2 is not touching baki all remaining all are touching the second forward path so what will be delta 2 delta 2 will be nothing but 1 minus actually it is 1 it will be 1 minus l2 will come what is l2 l2 is nothing but minus g4 h2 so we'll be getting the equation as 1 plus g4 h2 now it is easy we found all the data uh, required for finding the transfer function so now we can directly substitute into the formula so transfer function is nothing but sigma the summation k is equal to 2 because uh, two forward paths are there pk delta k upon delta so we are taking the sum of this k is varying from 1 to 2 so p1 delta 1 plus p2 delta 2 upon delta is the uh, equation according to the mason's gain formula now we directly substitute the values here we have found p1 p1 is g1 g2 g3 uh, g4 this one uh, g5 so this p1 into delta 1 we found it as 1 plus p2 is nothing but g1 g6 in delta 2 we found that it is 1 plus g4 h2 so that one we have substituted here in the denominator we are substituting the value of delta this is the value of delta we found it is 1 plus g2 g3 h3 plus g4 h2 plus g5 h1 plus g6 h1 h2 h3 plus g2 g3 g5 h1 h3 so we found the transfer function using mason's gain formula this is how you uh, will be finding uh, uh, the transfer function for a given signal flow graph using Mason's gain formula. But when you are uh, applying the Mason's gain formula for identifying the fo forward paths, please make sure that you are not counting this uh, self loop as the uh, forward path. Okay, so because it is uh, the uh, node will be traversing twice, that is why we won't consider the self loop in the forward path. Okay, I hope you understood. Uh, thanks for watching.